The Feline One of the most common pets in any household, being second behind dogs, it's no wonder the first cat girl dates as far back as 1949 with The King's Tale, and then gaining popularity in 1978 with the manga series The Star of Cottonland. Since then, cat girls have been seen everywhere, and it was only a matter of time before Genshin introduced their second cat girl, Kiara. Kirara. I want to say Kiara so bad, but it's Kirara. As a matter of fact, it's quite surprising that a gacha game only has two cat girls. I'm sure they would have sold quite well after all. And as someone who loves cats and girls, today I raise an important question. Who is the better cat girl? Hello everybody, I'm the Broger, and today I wanted to compare Genshin's two playable cat girls. Why, I have no idea. You see, this being a gacha game, it's pretty important that characters are marketable, I guess. Even if we don't want to admit it, that's essentially why we play this game. I'm just going to tear totter between these two, kind of compare and contrast them, and answer the important question. Which one of them deserves the, uh, fucking Neko award? I don't fuck. Leona, the short pink-haired girl with white, yellowish, and black dotted fur. She has very pretty greenish and bluish eyes, I think? And while she works at a bar, she still seems to be a kid. Or a kitten, I guess. And I say this because of her very, like, childish outlook on the world. Kirara, on the other hand, is an average human-sized female with dirty blonde hair and dark gray fur. Her demon cat eyes are emerald green, and she has two tails, but for whatever reason, her ears are fake! I still don't know why they made a cat girl replicate ears instead of just, I don't know, having cat ears? Maybe there's some, like, yokai lore here, but Yai has katune ears, so I honestly have no idea. Diana comes from the family of the cat slain bloodline, which essentially is just a family of people with feline features, such as like cat ears, a tail, and night vision. In her name card, it applies that the cause of this was some ancient prank played by a certain someone. I can only assume that this was Alice, Klee's mother, as the Cat's Lane bloodline extends as far back as 300 years ago, and Alice is at least 500 years old as far as we know. Now, Kiara is a Nekomata. I wish I could say more, but for now, at least, that's all we've got to go on. I mean, she's a yokai, yeah, but at least in her story, she was kind of just born and then went on about her life, you know, with her granny or whatever. Now, how well do they fit into, like, the cat stereotype, I guess? Well, Diona, I'd say she very much fits into the stereotype. She doesn't really like people all that much, save for her owner, which in this case is just her dad. And even then, she bosses him around like normal cats do. Though in this specific case, she has good intentions for it. She just doesn't know how to execute it all that well. She also has the Sundere side to her, which I can only assume is for the Moe Moe factor. Hirara, on the other hand, is what I assume most people would associate a dog with, actually, because she loves humans, she's very outgoing, and very much loves being outside. While there are certainly outdoor cats, I'm not denying that, this does lead more into like the classic anime girl stereotype, the ones who are there to look cute and be cute. In reality though, Diona's heritage kind of just makes her a human with cat features. So unlike Kirara, as far as we know, she can't physically turn into a cat. Now how they receive their visions are actually quite similar, but we'll get to that. Her father is a heavy drinker, and in her mind, her father is her shining idol. Someone she wants to be, but when he drinks, he turns into a bumbling idiot. And thus, she wants to destroy the wine factory, but, you know, not likely. She just wants to take it out from the inside, sabotage it. Hirara, on the other hand, just loves humans. That's all. There are some things here and there, like Yai Miko being her teacher, based on how to live with humans, and there's some mention of a Chiori, I think that's how you say it. I'm sure we'll learn more about her when we get to Fontaine, but as I mentioned earlier, Kirara seems to have just appeared. You don't know how or where, but she was a wandering cat for a while. Scar meow, if you will. She found comfort with an older lady while she was still a kitten, and eventually set off to see the world. Now, uh, I said that how they got their visions is pretty similar, and, uh, it basically is the exact same story. Diona's dad went missing for days on end, and of course this scared Diona, so she went looking for him. Through her determination, she got a cryovision and eventually found her father. Now, Kiara's caretaker, the granny, went missing for days on end, and of course this scared Kiara, so she went looking for her. And through her determination, she got a dendro vision and eventually found her granny. Yeah, no, I wish I was making this up, but the main difference is that in Kiara's story, her finding her granny was the first time she got a human form, but, you know, still pretty much the same story. <laughs> now, their fighting styles are actually pretty interesting. Diana seems to be really handy with a bow, and whether that's just for gameplay purposes, I don't know. Though, her father is supposedly a great hunter, so it wouldn't surprise me if he's taught her a thing or two. Kiara, fuck, I did it again. Kirara, on the other hand, is quite skilled with her fist. Seriously, in her attack animation, she just throws her sword and whips out the old Tom and Jerry. Now, while in lore, they seem to be good at throwing paws, Diana is in the unfortunate scenario of being an early character, which means wacky scalings, wacky constellations, and 
stiff ending attack animations. Seriously, look at the differences between the way older characters end attack chains versus the new ones. While Diona has the cute cat pose at the end of her chain, Kirara just has that little bit of extra flair to her attack chains that just aren't there for older characters. In terms of gameplay, Kirara's skill obviously offers more to like the cat-like aspect of her. Diona's cat focuses more on her like character, which obviously Kirara's does too. It just has that extra added cat feature. Well, that and a fucking nuke. Now I don't stop there, as we see in their idols. Diona's are very simplistic displays of cat-like behavior, as in cleaning yourself and stretching, as we know, like cats do. Kirara's idols, however, are a bit weird. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I understand. I think her first one is her looking around excitedly because, again, she loves the outside world, and then kawaii anime pose. Then her second one is what I can only assume is her admiring her box, which, you know... Cat stereotyping, damn Helioverse and their stereotypes. Now if I had to pick who would better fit the role of cat girl, I think the obvious choice is Kirara. Why? Because I feel like Kirara's sole appeal is that she is a cat girl. Sure, she has her whole delivery thing, but that's not exactly a masterclass in storytelling. Not saying she has bad lore, just saying that in comparison, Diona has more going for her on top of being a cat girl. Now, I'm not an expert in these things, so don't take my words super seriously. I'm just a guy on the internet comparing two cat girls for crying out loud. And, um, why did I spend six minutes talking about two cat girls? I don't know.